Israel. Shalom. First and foremost, we'd like to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai, Ba'asham, Rakai Kadash. I want to send double honors to my elders and apostles, a great millstone, they taught me the truth. Peace and salutations always to the hope of the elect doing this work throughout the four corners of the earth. So uh, I'm coming with this lesson, and Lord willing, it's edifying. This lesson was um, initially going into the surety of the word, Yahweh Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai. You know, and, uh, I was watching a video with the brother Pawaria up there in Great Millstone, Des Moines. And he um, he pointed out something that was, he pointed out a small fact, but a very significant fact concerning the word of Yahweh Shai, which is the most high, um, or the, the scriptures tend to repeat themselves. Okay? Because the, kind of, the, the word of the most high never changes. You know, you can go into the you can go into the blue letter app, and you can put in the word trust. You know, you'll have four or five different proverbs that sound just alike. Maybe a psalm. You know, and then sometimes you'll have um, certain scriptures in the apocrypha that uh, correlate with scriptures in the Old Testament. You know, and the reason why it repeats itself is because this word is short, man. And on top of that, Jake is a hard-headed people. You know, that's why the Most High said He sent He sent us. Into a rebellious nation of people that will not listen, or people that are uh, hard-hearted or uh, stiff-necked, you know. So the Most High, con He constantly had these things to be repeated, you know. And, we'll, and when we hit the highways and the hedges, and when we put up these videos, you'll hear, the, hear a lot of the same precepts coming out, you know, the same breakdowns. And that's because this is the time uh, these, these scriptures are true, man. Okay, so I'm gonna get a couple of precepts, and Lord, Lord, Lord willing, this is edifying. So this is the Book of Titus. The first chapter and the ninth verse which uh you know just to get straight to the point it says holding fast the faithful word as he had been taught that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers you know and when you read up a couple of verses it's talking about how a bishop should be someone who teaches the word someone who is um affiliated with the ministry how they should be they should be blameless they should be uh the um the, the husband of one wife so on and so forth Okay, just giving forth an example, but it says, why is he supposed to do this? And it says, holding fast the faithful word as he has been taught. The faithful word, you know, when you go into that word faith, you know, the etymology of it, it means what? To be trust, uh, trusted or um, honest or um, uh, truthful. Okay, this is what the faithful word is. The faithful word is Yahweh Bashim uh, uh, uh the scriptures. Okay, it says, as he as he has been taught, that he may be able by sound doctrine, both to exhort, the, both to exhort and convince, to convince the gainsayers. All right. So this word is sure. All right. This word is something that hey, that's why it says that wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. Where do we get this wisdom and knowledge from? We get it from the scriptures, man. We get ultimately we get it from the spirit. You know what I'm saying? But we get you know we get it through the scriptures, man, by way of reading. By way of watching the elders and apostles and uh, other brothers bring these scriptures out, you know, by way of studying on your own, you know, and ultimately it's just, you got to have that that uh, personal relationship with Yahweh Hashem Shai, man. You know, you have to have that personal relationship with Yahweh Hashem Shai, that He's dealing with you, you know, that He's giving you the correct spirit when you're going into these scriptures and you're reading these certain passages, you know, because you have, you have a lot of men that that can read these same scriptures that we read, and um, they can they can misconstrue. This can screw a lot of things, man. Which you know people have. Now I'll get this precept just real quick, and then I'm gonna jump into something else, um, or a different scripture, not something else. So I get for my wording. So this is the book of Hebrews. Let's see if I can find this here. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter four, and verse one. And the point is in verse two. It says, let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. You know, and that's what losing patience. That's why it says, let us fear. It is what? Fear is the beginning of wisdom. The wisdom of who? Of Yahweh Shai, which leads into salvation. All right? It says, lest a promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was this gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word did not profit them being uh not being mixed with faith in them that heard it you know so if you don't have faith in what you're reading you're ultimately not going to receive the the true breakdowns of these scriptures you know even if hey and even if you have you know uh, uh 
prominent man who is known to have a short word or have a good rapport in the scriptures to break it down to you, you still won't understand it, man. You know, because as, as, as it says in the book of wisdom, Solomon says, for into a malicious soul, wisdom should not enter. You know, so you have to have faith in these words, man. So I'm going to get a couple of scriptures. You know, this is one of the scriptures that the, um, the brother Paul already brought out as well. You know, I'm going to get it myself in the book of Surah, the second chapter, in the 10th verse. Okay? And it says this. So like the page was sticking. <coughs> Matter of fact, um, I'll start from seven. All right, it says, Ye that fear the Lord, wait for his mercy, and go not aside, lest she fall. Ye that fear the Lord, believe him, and your reward shall not fail. Why? Because they, we're going to get into it. We're going to get into it. It says, Ye that fear the Lord, hope for good and for everlasting joy and mercy. And this is the point. It says, Look at the generations of old and see. Did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded, or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken, or whom did he ever call, uh, despise that called upon him? And you know, this is uh, these are men that were faithful, uh, faithful in Yahweh Hashanah Shai. They trusted in the word, man. And they trusted in the promises. They trusted in uh, um, the deliverance that Yahweh Hashanah Shai is going to give us. You know, they, they trusted no matter what what uh, um, hardship they're facing, whether it be you know um, officers trying to you know detain them un unlawfully. You know, whether it be you know just some random random individual that's probably dangerous you know whatever, whatever the case is man we, we face these things as good soldiers of y'all by shimmy all shy man okay we're not we're not scared of what um man can do unto us because what we trust in the word man you know this word ain't failed this word will never fail man that's why it says matter of fact i'll grab this so i'm gonna come back to that in the book of matthew Matthew chapter uh, 24 and verse 35. It says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. So that the words of the Heavenly Father are never going anywhere, man. You know, as it tells us in the, uh, the Old Testament, it says the Lord, um, I am the Lord, I change not. You know, his word ain't changed, man. You know, the promises haven't changed. You know, hey, and, and, and that, well, what's part of the promises? You no know, deliverance, you know, getting that salvation. You know, the prophecies haven't changed. The prophecies are still the same. They're always going to be the same until they're, until they're fulfilled, man. And we believe in these things. So I'm going to get this in 2nd Ezra, chapter 16, or 15, so up here, in verse 2. And then, you know what, just, just to, um, and just, you know, just to, <laughs> to go on with what I was saying earlier, you know, as far as how the, the brother Puar, you brought up the point where the scriptures, um, they'll pretty much repeat themselves, you know, and it, they're saying the same thing, but it's beautifully, it's beautifully uh, worded. So I'm gonna get this in Second Ezra 15 and verse two. It says, um, matter of fact, I'll start from one. Behold, speak down in the ears of my people the words of prophecy which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord, right, and cause them to be written in paper, for they are faithful and true. They can be trusted. These are words that can be trusted. Who have ever trusted in Yahweh Shimei Shai? And 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 uh, um, and was confounded, you know. Who have trusted in His word and was forsaken, man? Who have ever called upon the name of Yahweh Shimei or Shai in sincerity? And that's another part of the um, the definition for the word faithful is uh, religiously sincere, you know. Which we're not religious, you know. The the Bible is is straight up is is uh, straight up our history, you know. It's not it's it's not a religion because when you go into that word religion, it goes into the Greek word religio, which means to tie down and constrain. Okay, so, but no, no. If you put it in the spiritual sense to uh, be religiously sincere, it's to, you're you're sincere about these these scriptures. You're sincere about believing in the heavenly Father, man. So let me get this in Psalms ninety three and verse five. You know, just uh, ninety three eight. Call Allah It says Psalms uh, Psalms ninety three and verse five. It says Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thine house, O Yahweh, forever. So the point is, is thy testimonies are very sure. You know, sometimes it'll say it a word is different, but it's saying the same exact thing. The testimonies of Yahweh Shem Shai are sure and are true. That's why these, these scriptures were written for us. You know, as it says in Romans, the 15th chapter, in the fourth verse, these were written for our, our learning, man. You know, from generation to generation, the same very word. You know, matter of fact, the book of second peter says that you know 
This is Second Peter, chapter three, and seven. Yep, verse seven. Yep. So this is our Second Peter, chapter three, and verse seven. It says, "But the heavens and the earth, which are now." By the same word are kept in store. It says by the same word. So the word of Yahweh shall never change. The judgments that were written aforetime, they never changed. The promises, they never changed. The name of the Heavenly Father it never changed. Alright? His chosen people has not changed. The color of their skin has not changed, man. You know, Yahweh Shem ain't changed nothing. He kept everything how it was. The only thing that's going to change is that this word is going to be written in our inward parts, man. That's the only thing that's going to change, and, we're going to, and, our, and our bodies are going to change. All right, this is the, the state of, the, of this. This earth is going to change. Okay, but the words of Yahweh Hashem they're going to stay the same, man, forever and ever, even when the kingdom of heaven is, is established. Okay, because it says that in the book of Isaiah, the second chapter, that these different nations they're going to flow into us for the uh, for the word and the commandments of Yahweh Hashem Yashai, the same laws, statutes, and commandments that have been written. Okay, this is what's going to establish the kingdom. All right, so this is the point. It says, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word are kept in store, reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and per perdition of ungodly men. So the word of Yahweh Shai is always going to remain how it is, man. You know, and you have a lot of people out here, they say, oh, and they, they, one, one statement that they make, you know, which we, we continually reiterate, because Jake's still on it, is that the Old Testament doesn't matter. You know, the same old words in the Holy Scriptures don't matter. But here it is, you'll go through the same type of situation, you know, uh, uh, biblically, in this day and age, but then you'll say, oh, all oh, oh, the, oh, the Bible doesn't matter. You have people that keep the dietary laws. You know, you have people that keep certain laws out of the uh, Old Testament, but they don't believe in it as a whole, man, because they want to continue to do what they want to do. But the word of the Most High ain't changed, man. You know, hey, look, because it says this. Uh, let's see if I can find this. I believe it's in the book of Romans. It's a lot there. I'm kind of all over the place. I didn't really prepare any scriptures for this. You know, just uh, jump straight into it. All right. Um, hey, but even in the even in the New Testament, it tells you um, <laughs> it tells you thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. You know, it's what? Just reminding you. You know, hey, uh, what is that? Stand up your pure minds by way of remembrance, man. How can we remember something that was never there? How can we remember something that we never been through? All right, proven in this day and age that Yahweh Shem Shai's words are true, faithful and true, man. All right, um, it's in the book of Romans. Let's see if I can find it. Because it, it vividly repeats itself. So like I can't find it right now. Okay, okay, here we go. Here we go. It's the book of Romans. And this is just to make a point. This has, you know, um, this is Romans 13 and verse 9. It says, For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in the same, namely, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. So ain't nothing changed, man. That's why you hear a lot of the same precepts, a lot of the same breakdowns, and a lot of brothers bringing out the same things. You know, for one, we're on one accord, but two, the scriptures, <laughs> it's, it's, they don't add to or take from. You know, it tells you in that book of Revelation, the, the very last book, the very last chapter, and I believe the very last, uh, uh, no, the, the almost the last, uh, last verse, it says Revelation 22 and verse 19. Matter of fact, um, start at 18. It says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man add unto these things, the Most High shall add unto him the plagues that are written in his, in this book. You know, and the precepts that go, <laughs> that it's talking about, is Deuteronomy 4 and 2 and Proverbs 30 and 5, which I'll I just check those. Uh, you see, Deuteronomy 4 and verse 2. So if you add unto the word, Deuteronomy 4 and 2 says this. Okay. It says, 
ye shall not add us. It just said the same thing over again. It says, ye shall not add unto this word which I command you. You need to show, you diminish off from it that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord Yahweh which I command you. You know, and to add, hey, it says, what, what are the plagues that were written? When you went, when you went through Egypt, those same plagues, the most I can add unto you. You can add unto you new plagues, you know, that we don't know of, but that maybe that the Lord was maybe referencing. Okay? It says, uh, and I'm going to go back into Revelation. In um, 22 and 19, it says, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, the Most High shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So the words of the Most High never change, man. You know, and if, if you out there and you thinking that uh, um, the Israelites are not the Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, as it says in the, the book of Genesis, the 49th chapter, if you think that's changed, Hey, the Most High is going to deal with you. If you think that Esau, Edom, the so-called white man today, if you think he has salvation, if you think he has a chance of salvation, a chance of repentance when the scriptures tell you he don't, the Most High is going to deal with you. You know, if you think that the RFID chip, hey, the RFID chip is coming. The Most High, he, he's going to, the Most High, the Most High, is, he got these things well prepared, man. You know, if you, if you don't believe in these things, the Most High, can, he can put you in a docile state to where you take that RFID chip. You know, which means what? Ultimately, you are you are you are a uh, uh, sworn enemy of Yahweh Bashan Shah. Okay. So, uh, with that being said, you know that the, the, the point of this lesson, or the the, um, the premise of this lesson, was man, the word of Yahweh Bashan Shah is true, it's sure, and it repeats itself. But it, it, it does that to 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 bust it into our hard ass heads, man. We got a bunch of hard head jakes out here, man. All right. So, hey, with that being said. I'm going to say shalom.